Hello guys, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on engineering science N1. Uh, in this platform, we shall be working on electricity uh, from the question paper of July 2022. So we are not going to waste much time. We shall quickly rush through the questions that we are given on electricity as we are doing revisions. Uh, the first question that we have on 10.1 is to name two examples of good conductors. I have explained this uh so many examples that we have so just pick any two of your choice so we can be working with uh metals such as copper we can be working with uh, gold we can be working with the zinc we can be working with silver so many that you can actually list okay so you just list any two of your choice all right so if you have got others please list them on the comment section so that others or they can also benefit from your answers that you have all right 10.2 draw the iec uh that is iec symbol okay of the following electrical components 10.21 a switch how do you draw a switch so a switch we have got something of this nature all right uh, so this one it's an open switch all right so we have got like this that's an open switch all right then a voltmeter. So a voltmeter, you're supposed to indicate with a V inside here to represent a voltmeter. If it is A, it's an ammeter. So this one with a V, it's a voltmeter. So sometimes they can draw these symbols and they ask you to name them, okay? This one was for you to draw, okay? 10.3, define potential difference. What is the potential difference? So we know that the potential difference that is the energy difference between two points that tend to let electrical current flow. All right, so that is our potential difference. In this case, that is the energy, uh, the energy difference, all right? So we've got the energy uh, difference between two points, all right? Between two points which tend uh, okay, uh, between two points, which tends or that tends uh, to let electrical current, okay? To let electrical current flow, electrical current flow. All right, so that is what you can give as your definition there. Uh, 10.4, when an electrical toaster, a toaster is switched on, a current of 5,5 amps flows, so given a current that is 5,5 amps uh, flows through it. The applied voltage is 220 volts. Calculate the resistance of the toaster. So remember that voltage is equivalent to current times resistance. So if we divide by current by current both sides, that means resistance is equal to voltage over current. Uh, that is the voltage 220 over the current, which is 5,5, okay? So if we divide properly, in this case, we are going to obtain 40. So this is 40 ohms. So that was the resistance of what? Of the toaster element. All right, so that was question 10.4. Uh, let's check the other part of the question, which is now on 10.5. Calculate the total resistance of the following examples. So for the first part, the resistors which are connected in series, three resistors, we've got 12, 6, 16, and 21. So remember guys, in series, you add all the resistors. So the total resistance for 10.51 is going to be RT, we add R1 plus R2 plus R3. That is uh, 12 plus 16, so it's for 12 plus 16 plus 21, okay? So if we add it properly, we are going to obtain 49 ohms. So that is the total resistance. All right, 10.52, three resistor value 22, 18, 31 in parallel. Okay, so these are three resistors. So the total resistance can be taken as uh, 10.52, one over the total resistance that is for parallel is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3, okay. So you add these resistors, one over RT is equal to one over R1, that is the first resistance, 
is 22 followed by 18 followed by 31. So this is one over 22. So it is going to be one over 22 plus the next one, one over 18 plus the third one, which is one over 31. Okay, so that means we can calculate uh, everything on the right hand side if we add all right so i'm going to show you from the screen here let's just have our calculator all right so we are going to add everything one over 22 all right plus one over uh 18 plus one over 31 okay so this is one over 31 like this which is going to be 409 over, uh, that was over 30369. Zero, three, zero, okay, so that's 3069. So you, this is one over RRT. For you to obtain RRT, you divide by one, so it's one over this, also here it's one over. So one over this fraction is the inverse of one over RRT, which is RRT. So RRT is going to be one divided by that answer that you had on your calculator here. You just divide one divided by answer, which is three three thousand six nine over four hundred nine, and uh, as a decimal, that's seven comma five zero four. Okay, six is going to change this three into four, so that's seven comma five zero four ohms. All right, so that is how you calculate the total resistance if you are given a parallel combination, all right? Uh, so that was question 10.52. 10.6, name three factors that influence the resistance of a conductor. All right, I talked about this, guys. Whenever you're dealing with the resistance of a conductor, you take these values or these conditions from the formula for resistance of a conductor. Remember that the resistance of a conductor is taken from rho L over area, where this re is resistivity, showing the type of material. So resistivity, that is the type of material that you are using, all right? The L is for the length of the conductor. So we are dealing with the length of the conductor in this case, all right? The A is for the area, which is the cross-sectional area. So from this formula, we've got three, uh, we've got three answers that we can have, the type of material, the length and the area. Then the last one is an effect, which is an ambient physical factor that is temperature, all right? So here we are going to have temperature. So any three, because the question is name or name three factors, okay? Uh, 10.7, temperature is an effect on materials. Yes, what effect will the increase or the rise in temperature have on an alloy such as a brass, okay? So if you are given an alloy such as a brass, temperature has no effect on the resistance of an alloy such as brass, okay? So there, there is no effect at all if you are dealing with a brass. So here there is no effect, all right? 10.8. What factors influence the resistivity of a conductor if the temperature stays constant? What factors? Take note, guys. We are back to this same thing. Resistivity was taken from this part here. Remember, I said resistance is equal to rho L over area. So which factors now affect this resistivity if temperature remains constant? So definitely... We are talking about the type of material, the length, and the cross-sectional area, okay? So these are the factors which are going to affect. So we talk about the type of material, the length, and the area because the temperature is constant, all right? So these are the three factors that you can have. 10.9, we are given the following is printed on an electrical lamp, okay? So on the lamp, it's printed 100 watts, which is the power. 220 volts, which is the voltage. Calculate the current. So take note, we have got power and voltage. And we know that uh, power is given as, uh, if you have got voltage and current, that is voltage times current. So since you want to find the current, you can divide by voltage by voltage so that you can find power 
over voltage, which gives you the current. And we are given the power in this case is 100 over the voltage, which is 220. All right. So that is what you're going to have. If you divide, you're going to obtain 0 0.4555 to 3 decimal places. Okay. Uh, 10.92. We are now asked to calculate the energy cons consumed. Okay. If the lamp is switched on for 16 minutes, so the energy, which is Q, remember that Q is given on your formula sheet as Q is equivalent to power times time, which is VI times time or I squared R times. So it depends if you have got the power, like in this case already, we have got the power here. So we're just going to take this power as it is. So that is going to be 100 watts times the time which is measured in seconds, take note. So this is 16 minutes, you must convert to second and we know that in a minute, we have got 60 seconds. So to convert 16 minutes to seconds, you multiply by 60. So that's 16 times 60 like this, all right? So if you combine everything, we are going to have 96,000 in this case which is measured in joules. So you can leave, leave your answer in joules like that, or you can convert to kilojoules. For you to convert to kilojoules, you divide by 1,000, which is going to be 96 kilojoules, or you multiply by 10 to the exponent of negative three, which is the inverse. Remember, kilo, kilojoules, kilo means times 10 to the exponent of three. So the inverse of to the exponent of three is to the exponent of minus three. So you can have your answer in what? In kilojoules, okay? Uh, on 10.10, .10, define the Fleming's right-hand rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field around a solenoid, okay? How, 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 how do you state or how do you describe the Fleming's right-hand rule, okay? So this is the description that I have got for you guys. You're going to work with this description as needed. In your, uh, in your syllabus, okay? Grab see, the coil in the right hand with the fingers pointing in the direction of the convectional current. Your extended thumb will point in the direction of the north pole of the magnetic field. All right, so that is uh, the Fleming's what? The right hand rule, so uh, that is one that you are required to give as an explanation as uh, required in your syllabus, guys. So just two marks for that. So please just revise as much as you can your theory. So that's what you had, guys, on electricity from Maison African Motives, Engineering Science, N1, till we meet again.